Isn't that just fantastic? I've come home from work today and we've got a surprise parcel. Uh, I'm not sure what's in it, so I could look a bit silly here, but I'm hoping it's a parcel from Sterling Kit. Let's have a look. And it is indeed. And this is the new Retro R01, which is a 12th scale Ryder Ericsson hot air engine. Let's have a little look. As you can see, it is very, very small. But it does look wonderful. So let's have a little look at the instructions and see what it says. It is assembled from many fine small parts. A cast brass flywheel is used on the main shaft and the mounting base plate is made of solid wood. It uses gas as fuel. Its combustion chamber is equipped with a mini stove head and a furnace door designed for ignition. It uses water circulation cooling and there is a mini water pump installed on the body. The water pipe is connected to the brass tank. Perhaps this is the world's smallest Ryder Ericsson hot air pumping engine model. Now, I have actually owned one that was at least the same size, may have possibly been slightly smaller, but this is definitely, without doubt, the smallest commercially produced Ryder Ericsson model. PM Research also do one, but that is quite a lot larger. This is definitely the smallest that you can buy commercially. The Ericsson style engine is a beta engine which contains both power, piston and displacer within one cylinder. The cylinder has a hot end with a firebox and a cold end surrounded by a water jacket. As the air is heated within the cylinder, the air expands driving the piston upward. The displacer next moves downward pushing the air from the hot side into the cool side of the cylinder. The air then contracts pulling the piston downward, the displacer then moves the air from the cool side to the hot side and the cycle begins again so let's follow the instructions and finish building the engine so step one is install the brass smoke pipe on the furnace body and check the normal connection of the gas pipeline so this is going to be the brass chimney and that is where it is supposed to live just pushed into there like so and the gas pipe connection is going to be that little flexible rubber part just there but isn't that fantastic i only wish i was capable of producing something like that myself have got a myford lathe and i can make you just about anything round like a washer or a spacer but I'm afraid anything more than that is a bit beyond me. This is just ordinary Swan Universal Gas Lighter Refill from the corner shop. And I'm hoping one of these fittings will bring it tall enough to take it away from that water pipe. Because that is a little bit close. And I'd rather I didn't break it before we even get started. That's probably the tallest fitting. And... I don't know if we can get a bit in there. Well, it, although we are touching the pipe, it is definitely going in. Now, I've got a few other gas-fired things, and when the tank is full, it will start to spray out at the valve, which I can't imagine this tank is going to take too much at all. I think that'll do for an initial fire up. See, as you can see, we've actually distorted that pipe a little bit, so we'll just put that back there. But there is another type of uh, gas which is used for propane torches, etc. These, and you can get a fitting for the top of the bottle, which will do that job nicely. I have got one somewhere, but I can't find it. But hopefully for the next video, 
I will try and dig it out and see where it is. So, after doing that, the instructions say, open the furnace door and ignite the gas on the furnace head. Now, before we do that, I think it would be better to at least give it a small amount of lubrication. So, remember the precision pens that we used in previous videos. I will leave the link in the description. I don't think it's going to hurt to just go around the engine and all the pivoting points give them an initial oil up like so there are quite a few moving parts around there like so and then as the instructions state we will open the furnace door it's a firebox as opposed to a furnace but never mind turn on the gas and you can hear the gas and there we go it's on now I do think the smaller the flame the better Get it as low as possible. And I'll just lift that up and show you that that is lit. You can see that in there. So while that's warming up, I've got a bit of water for the cooling side. I'm going to get this in here ahead of reading the instructions because you wouldn't want it to overheat, but then the instructions say after the combustion begins, add water to the small tank and unscrew the small water tank cover on the small pump. After injecting a small amount of water, install the return water tank cover. I'm going to assume they mean this, which is going to be a primer for the pump. And we just got a, an inkjet cartridge syringe is all that is. Doesn't seem to be too much in there, but that was very simple and straightforward. It is very, very fast. Slightly concerned that the water pump isn't pumping. Oh, don't drop that little cap. That is tiny. There we go. That is now pumping water. Now, despite the fact that it's not usually advisable and you're supposed to use graphite powder, really, for super low friction things like the cylinder, I have given this a slight drop of oil from the precision oiler pen. And that's provided a small amount of friction, which has actually slowed it down to a far more sensible speed. No doubt there's some people that will disagree with that idea, but I'm sure you have to agree that is running incredibly nicely. Even the little water pump is pumping. Now, I have seen that Sterling Kit are also doing a Retrol RO2, which is a 12th scale model of the Denny Improved Ericsson pumping engine. 
so make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see that in a future video and hopefully we'll have one of those from Sterling Kit very soon to do a comparison with this one but so far I am very very impressed so leave us a comment below and let us know what you think of this have you got a smaller one have you seen a smaller model yes there are smaller sterling engine models but a scale model of the Ryder Ericsson has anyone seen a smaller one I mean just the scale we'll hold this steel rule up behind and it's just shy of 15 centimeters or six inches and that's including the base we put the steel roll on the base It's actually five inches tall. Fantastic. Now, if your usual excuse is that you don't have room to be interested in engines, you don't really have an excuse anymore, do you? So I will leave a link in the description below for the Sterling Kit website where you can get yours. As these have just been released, I believe they will be a bit of a limited run for a start. So if you want one, don't leave it. Get in quick and get one so that you're not waiting months for the next batch. But I do think they are absolutely wonderful. I will also leave a link to the page on our own website where you can see the videos of all the model engines that we've reviewed for Sterling Kit and other manufacturers. So be sure to check that out. So, do I recommend one of these? If you're into hot air engines, can't really see how you cannot own one the more it runs the smoother it gets I mean just look at the little nuts and bolts on there I'm 32 and my eyes are struggling and there's nothing wrong with my eyesight it's fantastic so in my opinion should you buy one how have you not already? If you're into hot air engines, you have to own one of these. I will leave the link in the description below for you to go and purchase your own directly from Sterling Kit. They have currently got uh, up to 40% sale on. So if you're quick, you can get it at the best possible price. So for this video, I'd just like to say thank you to Sterling Kit for giving me this opportunity to review this for them. And thank you all for watching if you haven't already please like this video and subscribe to the channel and until next time goodbye